grade are you in? I B. Do you do you like school? Yes. Yes, we no. like school. What do you like about school? We like something. We see lots of crime on the street. Yes. This is the sound of young students who are attending high school for the first time. Though eager to learn, these students come from some of the country's most notorious neighborhoods and are forced to grow up in a society plagued by gangsterism and crime. The unsafe environment they live in is mirrored by the appalling conditions of their school, which is continuously being burgled, often by ex-pupils. The overwhelming gang culture and subsequent rise in tick abuse has caused a seemingly unstoppable crime wave in the area. My name is Michaela Stevens. I'm 16 years old and I attend Catkin High School. I'm in grade 10. I must pass this class. The common thing that they um, steal is copper and they break like the windows and stuff and they still taps. Why do you think they steal? For drugs. Main thing is drugs. Because they say they um, change it in, turn it in, they get money for drugs. Established in 1973, Kathkin High was the first school built in the community of Heidefeld. The iconic school is however being ruined by the community it serves. Here, it's not a matter of if, but when another break-in will occur. Senior caretaker Charles Jongblut says that the rise in school break-ins negatively affect teaching conditions as well as the students' ability to learn. In the community where we live in, they used to it. They used to gangsters, they used to gunshot, they used to these kind of things. I mean, you can't teach or even learn with broken windows, broken ceilings, broken roofs. It takes a lot out of teachers. And what about our children? When you sit in those windy conditions, wind blowing through the window, rain coming through the roofs, everybody's got to move to one side of the of classroom. He says the thick security locks, steel gates in front of every classroom, burglar bars on the windows and armed response doesn't deter thieves who ultimately find a way to get into the school. Anything that can be melted down and exchanged for money is at risk of being stolen. Barbed wire is not keeping them out anymore. They throw a blanket over the barbed wire and then they jump over it. They very seldom break down our doors because we have burglar gates and doors. So it's easy access into the, the rooms via the roof and the ceilings. It's a sad story. Earlier in the year, over 100,000 rand was spent on repairs to the home economics classroom. However, thieves returned forced their way in and destroyed everything. All the electrical wiring, all the steel taps and its pipes have been ripped out. Almost all the teaching equipment has also been taken. Elizabeth Picure has been teaching at Kathkin for 31 years and says that the school's conditions are unsuitable for both teachers and learners. The learner is suffering in the end because the teacher doesn't have the resources to availability. The stress levels, if I talk about myself, I am stressed every day. And especially if you teach the junior learners like the grade eight and nines, you can't keep up with the energy that they have. So you are stressed all the time. It's all kinds of problems, as spanking, absenteeism, lack of motivation, etc. Teachers at the school maintain that this affects the progress of learners who can now only be assessed on theory for their current June exams. Besides the high crime levels, she and her colleagues say overcrowding, disregard for authority and even violence are common at school and a reflection of the student's home environment. That is the problems that we encounter, the learners come with those problems from home to the school and they expect the teacher to assist, the teacher to teach, to be a mother, to be a um, social worker and you just need to be a jack of all trades. Situated right next to the school, are multiple blocks of flats, which are surrounded by idle groups of people who signify the area's high unemployment rate and growing underclass. Evidently, the increase in crime levels at the school is mainly due to the large numbers of gangsters in the area who viciously control the drug trade on the Cape Flats. Gangsters allegedly recruit school pupils to commit crimes such as breaking into classrooms or becoming dealers on the school. Students who ask to remain anonymous share some of the experiences with gangsterism. How many gangs are you on the school? Oh, no. 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 
get for life sense boys Everybody saying that you that know is the biggest gang on the school. Or the police oh, station, the they, they, they are mad over us already. Yes, the the boys. Yes, boys. The all the girls, all the girls is in love with the Scombeja boys. That's why we said yeah. Even the school know about the Scombeja boys because the Scombeja boys is well known. There's a lot around us of Pontyville, like the youngsters in the primary school, what are some of the problems they have at home? The, the parents are doing drugs. Parents don't want to go work. Now that's also maybe stuff that you tell them, hey, my mommy and my daddy don't care, why must I care? If I'm gonna go with that gang, they will provide for me. There are many boys there that, that, that didn't even reach my age yet. They didn't even reach their age six yet and they're not even going to school anymore. Some of them are even dead. They're doing drugs, sitting on the corner. Like it's a gang, a session to one. You always see on a session to one yo, Robby, Rob is my job. And that is what the younger ones see. And then they go and experience to how to rob somebody. Take me with you. And he's not gonna say no. And then he say, nah, this is why I'm getting money if I do this. I don't have food at home. So this is gonna be my living. Due to the poor socioeconomic conditions in the neighborhood, many students feel that joining a gang is more viable than receiving an education. Humphrey Bowen is the principal at Cathkin High and has been at the school for almost 40 years. He claims that the present situation is closely tied to the country's past and that burglary at the school will continue unless conditions in the community are improved. People were moved here yeah, and perhaps in the early 70s and 80s. It's not a sense of belonging that developed here. Yeah. Yeah, people were simply mixed up. On, okay. I wouldn't say the majority of people are involved in crime. It's a minority, but it's a bigger minority than in the more, more fluid area. And uh, they are affecting the area. Um, I don't think that those who are against crime have it in their powers to stop crime. The state actually needs to intervene with a well thought of and studied program. I think it starts with parenting. Uh, we got to break the cycle of poor parenting because people who are brought up poorly, they also become poor parents. And many of these learners have parents who are involved in drugs or are gangsters and so on. And so the cycle is continued. Burglar alarms, uh, security at school, that's short term things, but it won't change the situation. Keeps a lid on it to some extent, but they go home to the same environment. Many of us, when we started here, yeah, and we got involved with the unions and activism, the idea was that one day this place will change, but we haven't seen it. Mr. Bowen says that perhaps changes in the school syllabus could also make learning more conducive to students coming from tough neighborhoods. Curriculum has to be customized more to the needs, it's not one uh, size fits all. If there is something like substance abuse and gangsterism, starting a primary school needs to be adapted to that. And then the high schools need to provide qualifications for such learners. You know, if a lot of these learners are going into trades and so on, then they should make a more amenable to that type of education. The students' right to learn in a safe environment has been taken away by crime and they are left to deal with the traumatizing experience of learning in a vandalized classroom. Learners risk their lives by walking to and from school. For them, simply making it to class is an achievement. Benedict Parther, Cathkin High School, Cape Town.